How do scientists determine what these molar masses are in terms of taking isotopes and identifying in a given sample how much of it is a percent of, uh, of uh, one isotope as opposed to another? Well, use, uh, they use a machine called a mass spectrometer. Now, mass spectrometer essentially has five stages uh, by which it operates. Now, for uh, a lot of advanced placement and IB courses, you kind of need to know uh, how a mass spectrometer works. So let me just break it down in a nutshell. It's a big machine, and what you do is you take a sample of your chemical that you've got, and you put it into the machine, and the first thing that happens is that the sample gets vaporized, step one. Then, the sample gets ionized, which means electrons are stripped off of it, and that becomes a charged particle now. Now, what you do with a charged particle is that you excite it in an electrical field to make it really move fast. So you vaporize it, then you ionize it, and then you uh, accelerate it. Okay, then after you accelerate that particle, what you can do is you can take a magnetic field and deflect the particles. And of course, if you're a, if you're a heavily charged uh, particle, um, you might be deflected more in a magnetic field, and also if you are a heavy particle in terms of mass, you'll be deflected less. Those two things are taken into consideration in the deflection aspect of it to be able to manipulate the magnetic field to make some particles pass through without ramming into the walls of the, def of the def deflection device and then going right to a detector. And so you vaporize, you ionize, you accelerate, you deflect, and then you can detect. And those percentages will come up on a readout and you'll be able to determine how much of a sample is a certain isotope or what the molar mass is of a certain chemical. That's how a mass spectrometer works. Now here's a question that is based on the last one that we did where I, I, I said, well here are two percentages uh, and can you take the percentages of isotopes and use these AMUs, which is just like grams per mole, and be able to utilize that information to calculate the average uh, molar mass, or we say the atomic weight. Well, okay, we, show, we saw the step-by-step -step process that you could do. You just take the percent over 100 times the mass, percent over 100 times the mass, and you'll be able to get, when you add those two together, the atomic weight, or the average of the AMUs. Well, okay, but what happens if you're asked this question? Hey, you're given the masses here, and you're given what the total is, which is 12.01, which is the molar mass of carbon on the periodic table, right? 12.01. What are the percentages? Oh, okay, that's a little bit of a different question. Well, it doesn't have to be tough if you just break it down for yourself. Look, the idea is this again, right? If you take the AMUs for carbon, which is exactly 12 for carbon 12, that's the, that's the number for its AMUs, and multiply by its percent, which we don't know, we're going to say that's X and that's Y, that percent over 100 plus this percent over 100 times the AMUs, we're going to get that 12.01, which is given to you in the question. But the question is, how do you solve for these two numbers when they're different? Okay. There has to be a relationship between the two, so you can, use, you can use systems of equations to be able to figure it out. And you do know, don't you, that these two percentages, since there are only two isotopes here, there are more isotopes of carbon actually on the planet, but to like, like, like carbon-14 is so very, very minuscule in amount, that to even these number of decimal places, uh, it, it, it's just not even significant. And so these two essentially are all the carbons on the planet. Okay, given that, this number and this number have a relationship. This and this both have to equal the number 100 in terms of percent. So whatever x is, y is going to be 100 minus that number. And now you've got a similar variable for both of those and you can attack the question, right? So what you would do is, here's what I'd do anyway to do this math. I would uh, take this, this term right here and this term right here and this term here and multiply each by 100. So I get this, I get this, when I multiply this whole thing by 100, and I get 1201 when I multiply that by 100 there. And then of course to distribute, I got 12x plus 13.003355 uh, uh, times 100 minus x. Now by the way, I got to distribute this to this, this to this as well, to equal 1201. When you do that math, and then you isolate for x, 
x in this case is going to equal 98.89. Give it a try and try it out because <laughs> that is going to be the number that x is and x is going to be the mass of carbon 12 right there and that means that y is going to be 100 minus that and keep two numbers after the decimal, 1.11%. Give it a try. See how it works. It'll be great.